Hi Sara, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure, Sara. Today we are in for some pearl talk. With us is Sara, who is the third generation pearl dealer of Pacific Pearls, who will talk to us about uh, the Japanese kasumi pearls that they specialize in, and also show us uh, some of the rare natural and cultured pearls. And guys, Sara will also talk to us about. ethical pearl farming practices which is extremely important so sara we are looking forward to learn all about japan kasumi pearls and about the wide variety of cultured pearls and natural pearls that you have let's begin by knowing what does the word kochima mean kochima it means small island in japanese mm-hmm. and when i was quite young late teens i was in japan with fuji who's my teacher and he used a stamp for the family to sign a check and okay. i thought oh i really need one of those that's the coolest thing ever so we went to the shop and he helped me pick one out and i chose kojima oh wow that's interesting and how did you begin your journey with pearls i started by stringing pearls so i okay. was young and I, my fingers were very fast so i could make knots between the pearls very quickly And wow. so I learned two or three different methods of that in my teenage years mm-hmm. and then I learned slowly slowly how to buy and sell pearls and then started okay. traveling to to buy pearls in foreign countries and bringing them back right. here and I did very early in my life. So I have seen a wide variety of pearls, Kojima pearls. So let's begin by seeing some of your exclusive pearls. We're most famous for obviously is the Japan Kasumi pearls yes. and so those come from the only freshwater pearl producing lake in Japan um okay. at one time it was Japan Kasumi and Biwa Lake Biwa is very famous also um so Japan Kasumi pearls come from obviously a freshwater mollusk it's a hybrid mm-hmm. mollusk and i can get into more of that after um so they come in the typical natural freshwater colors and they are bead nucleated so they are farmed At okay. this time there's only 3 farmers working in this industry in Japan. Can you show us some of the pearls and explain what makes them so different and what makes them so popular? What makes them so different is these 3 farmers. Pearls of course natural color freshwater pearls are also grown in China no. as we all know. I'm not sure right. if you're able to really get the colors there. Um mm-hmm. So what makes this so special is that these three farmers are still doing this after so much trial and tribulation. And they are also special for their colors. Okay. So the top strand here is a baroque strand and it has a rippled surface which is a characteristic of Japan Kasumi pearls. You can okay. also find this in ch- Chinese freshwater pearls, but these being from Japan, it it speaks to an age old tradition as you said three generation right? so this is important in the jewelry industry I request you to hold the pearls in your hand because we were not able to buy them for a longer time so lovely yes print colors the colors are a bit blown out you'll get a better view of it on our website of course and they come in all different shapes right sara yes they also come in round pearls so the the best colors from japan kasumi are going to come oh you really can't see this i'm so sorry this looks dreadful it's an incredible green and rainbow color pearl with lots of right. undertones and really high luster and okay. of course they also come in round mm-hmm. this is not a particularly round pearl but this is a smooth pearl Um so the rounder pearls and the smoother pearls sometimes can have deep color but for the most part they don't have the phenomenal luster and the really really deep rainbow overtones for which right. Japan Kasumi are most famous. Mhm. Also seen some beautiful South Sea and the Tahitian pearls. So please uh, take us through the different colors of the Tahitian pearls of the South Sea pearls that you have. Um right now we have some lovely really deep golden south sea pearls. Okay. These might show up better on the camera. Yes. So these are gorgeous natural colors and lovely. nice round shapes. Okay. And we can see that they all are good uniform size. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> I like wow. peeking out from behind the pearls. So obviously with every 
different kind of pearl. There's a natural range of color. And so yes. this is all South Sea pearls, except for the tiniest little ones here. And okay. so do you see they can also come in, in lighter cream colors and white colors, and they can even yes. come in silver and blue. And now may I request you to hold both the golden color and this one together so we could see the difference um, in the colors. Wonderful, yes. We can easily spot the difference now. Mm -hmm. Also South Sea pearls. Sorry. Oh. Casual. Yeah. easy it is to source the pearls of same color and more or less of the same size to fit them into a string of necklace everyone is looking for the top end of course mm -hmm. so yes. it's not that easy to find yeah um what i do a lot is i will buy a lot of loose pearls and okay. so they will come you know 40% of the lot will be flawless, and then you have a bunch of more Baroque things or something that has small flaws on it. So I'll take those and I sort those and make our own strands, which is one of the things that we're kind of famous for is making unusual mixes of different kinds of pearls. Mm -hmm. So I'll take 30% South Sea and some Tahitian wow. pearls and some Chinese pearls and kind of mix them all together. Let me see some of those pearl mixes. These are all in the necklaces or, or do you also make them, you know, in maybe in bracelets and earrings or, you know, like different forms of yeah. jewelry, yes? Okay. Yeah, we do them in all the different styles. Um, so this is a new one we just made. Okay. And this contains Chinese freshwater, Japanese akoya, and yes. South Sea pearls. And so it's got like a light rose pink to it and some nice creams and bright whites and little beads, little metal beads to give some little bit of flash. And the exactly. Japan Akoya pearls are drilled here so that they flutter. So this is a necklace that can be worn long or short, which is another thing that we do quite a lot. So it looks great okay. as a long piece and then so it can the double time. around the neck. Mm -hmm. What earrings are you wearing, Sarah? Those are something very different. These are really fun. They're nice and long. They're made with mm -hmm. Chinese freshwater pearls in a variety of sizes. I love these. Yes. We've done Very these in lots of different permeations. Okay, that's interesting. What new different types of jewelry do you have in your mixed pearl category? It's something simple that we do. And okay. these are Chinese fresh, uh, sorry, these are Japan Kasumi pearls with one yes. Tahitian pearl in the middle. So oh, it's just something to make it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I say a lot of our mixes, they're, um, without being vain, they're quite popular and they sell very quickly. And so now we still are working with remote workers here. And so okay. it takes more time for us to create the mixed necklaces. So they pop up every week or two, something like that. And nice. depending upon the style, sometimes they move nice. very quickly. And talking about style, what is your inspiration to create these so fun and these you know, easy to wear pearl jewelry they all come as if you know you can wear from day to night and carry it off you know with any outfit any color i've always loved making jewelry i've been making jewelry since i was a child and when i started working for pacific pearls and we we would have booths i wanted to show my jewelry and fuji said no problem as long as your jewelry always has a pearl in it it's fine in the booth and so Absolutely. from there, everything I've ever made since then has always had a pearl in it. So my inspiration starts with something I want to wear. And right. then I figure out how to incorporate pearls or can I make mm. that out of pearls, which is one of my favorite things to do and make really unusual mixes. Times. These are much more playful. So this is something we do where we mix African glass beads and okay. we wire wrap them into chains with South Sea pearls. So these are great for summer. They're really nice. colorful yes. and they're still really elegant because they have the glow of the pearl. Yes. And they're great shapes, nice Baroques, really right. pillowy kind of cloud shapes. 
and then really joyous glass beads. Yes. So I love to mix inexpensive material with the most expensive right. pearls. I love to make unusual pieces. To have amazing and a great collection of Tahitian pearls. So please take us through the different colors and shades of Tahitian pearls that you have. Uh, there's so many different shades of Tahitian pearls. This, I think, is this neck is a good place to start because you get a wide variety. So Tahitian wow. pearls can go sometimes in really white. And then they'll start into a light silver. They'll move all the way through silver to gray, to nice. black. And once you get into black, wow. and sometimes in silver, you get amazing different undertones in, in, within that color range. So you can have a black pearl that reads as cherry or peacock okay. or mm -hmm. aubergine. And there's so many different kinds of overtones and, and color play in Tahitian pearls, which is really what's kept them so famous. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful pair here. So classy. Yeah. Sometimes we sell, um, not often, but sometimes we'll sell carved pearls. And Asian pearls are very famous for this. Not everyone loves them. But this is a pair. I've kind of mixed up how they work. Mm -hmm. They're carved by hand in the islands Wonderful. and it's a really special tradition. They oftentimes use traditional motifs from the Pacific Islands. And I think it's the coolest thing. It's not it's for wonderful. everyone, but when it's done well, it's really a masterpiece. Right. These are Tahitian Keshi pearl earrings. So okay. Keshi pearls are a byproduct of culturing. Mm -hmm. They're pearls that were not planned. Wow. They're often produced when the animal spits out the nucleus, which is the shell right. bead. Mm -hmm. And or they can be produced when it, a parasite gets into the animal and the animal quickly coats it to protect itself. And so right. this is a free form pearl that comes from a wow. farm. So normally we've seen Keshi pearls to be a very small sizes, but the one that you showed us is of a big size. Can you please show yeah, us these one are today? Giant. Yes, yes, exactly. Definitely. These are really giant pearls, as you said. Lovely. Mm hmm. Yeah, they have a beautiful glow. Yes, they do. And do we see some texture which is also a little different? Amazing. I think it might be the light. There you go. That's a yes. little better. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. These are also Tahitian Kishi pearls here. Much more free form and yes. a much younger design. Yes, absolutely spoke about the Japan Kasumi pearls, the South Sea pearls, the Tahitian pearls. You showed us your mixed lot, which are absolutely interesting. And now talking about pearl farming, you know, since you, that you travel a lot, so have you yourself witnessed pearl farming? Yeah, in several places. And it's a little bit different depending upon the species that people are farming. But mm -hmm. overall, the most important thing to keep in mind about pearls is that they are the one and only thing in the jewelry industry that's actually good for the environment. In order to grow pearls, no matter where you are, you have to have clean water. Mm -hmm. So the more money that goes into the pearl industry, right. the more the farmers are likely to keep their water clean. And I have witnessed right. this in many different countries where the farmer, farmers really fight against in, environmental causes sometimes natural environments throw rhythm in the water that will in turn right. kill the oysters or mollusks. So that could be oh industrial runoff, for instance, right. and that could be an imbalance in the plankton and the, the microorganisms mm -hmm. within the water. And it's very important. I think people really overlook how good pearls are for the environment. And they're right. the one and only thing in the entire jewelry industry that is actually giving back to the environment by being grown. You also have a variety of natural pearls. So please talk to us about the different types of natural pearls by Kojima pearls. Okay, I have some, here we have some, oh, this is really horrible. Oh, this is such a beautiful color. I would love for you to be able to see it completely. Yes. These are abalone pearls. So these yes. mostly come from the coast of California. Mm hmm really can't see the color there. I'm sorry. 
but these are very um, rare, right? Very rare. First of all, they're protected. Um, a lot of these are quite old. So these came out of the water 10 or 20 years ago. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a protected animal and people can only fish it at certain times of the year. Really strict regulations about how big the animal must be before they can take it out of the water. So mm -hmm. it's about one in a thousand shells before you get a wow. pearl. Wow. The pearls have the color of the shell, but they are actually grown inside the body of the animal. So it is not abalone shell. Their occurrence and it's a great gift. I also have some very weird ones. <laughs> this is a necklace made of pearls from the giant clam. And I actually made this myself. So again, I like to buy lots of different pearls and create weird necklaces. So again, this is this shape and, and it has zero luster. So it's not for everyone, but it's, it's an anomaly and collectors enjoy and appreciate how rare this is much mm -hmm. like rare diamonds. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you mentioned that collectors enjoy these rare necklace, advice would you give to our audience that is looking forward to build a collection of these exclusive pearl jewelry? To build a collection, I would say, narrow down your top five varieties that you're mm -hmm. most interested in. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Buy the most intriguing pearl or piece of jewelry made out of these pearls that you can find. And then move from one to the next. It's such a wide world. I mean, there are so many different kinds of pearls and it's far reaching. And the more you get into it, the more expensive they get. <laughs> so start <Absolutely>. small. <laughs> Save your money <laughs> because it's a never ending cycle. Are you making towards 2021? Now 2021 is almost half year has passed by. So are there some new designs, some new innovations that you've come up with? Right now, after we finish today, um, I'm focusing on, we, we have a party every year, although we weren't able to have it in 2020. And it's called Pearls by the Bay, and we host it mm -hmm. here in Sausalito. And mm -hmm. so we invite our customers to come there, and we have okay. a cap because we can't afford to host everyone. And we have a lovely day where we have lectures and different pearl farmers come in from different countries, and we have right. different lectures about different kinds of pearls. So that's really what I'm going to be working on and, and pushing all of the best designs that we have out into that party. It's going to be in the beginning of October. This is for the people who can make it to the US of A, but for the audience that is not in USA and if they wish to contact you and they would like to invest in few of your exclusive pearl jewelry and your designs, how can they contact you? The best is to email us. It's kojimapearl okay. at gmail.com. And so that's mm -hmm. the best way to get in touch with us. And we can start from there. You can tell us what you're interested in, what your budget is. And we'll mm -hmm. send you some photos and we'll work from there. We do this quite a lot. And do you also exhibit at any of the trade shows? Yes, we used to do many, many trade shows, but right now we're still waiting for Tucson show to happen again. Tucson show, we exhibit in the GJX, which is across the street from the AGTA. Mm -hmm. And it's a brilliant show. We've been doing it for 25 years or something i think last year would have been my 24th mm -hmm. year in a row so it's a great show wow. we see all of our old friends and we have a beautiful You're setup right. and pearl command a presence by itself without diamonds being incorporated in designs absolutely those themselves are not rare there's pearl farms all over the world yes. natural pearls are very rare and gem quality right. pearls are very rare. So it mm -hmm. takes thousands and thousands and thousands of oysters, sometimes multiple harvests before you get one absolutely mm -hmm. perfect pearl. So this is, this is what's rare about pearls. So that's why I say when everybody is looking for the top grade, that can be really difficult to find. So if you find a flawless necklace, this is rare, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they can absolutely command a presence. It really depends on the wearer. It depends on their education about pearls. I saw that you mentioned this morning that the, the Rajas were all wearing robes yes. of pearls. Yes. So pearls were the first gem. 
pearls were found naturally as people fished along the seashore. And mm -hmm. so pearls were the first gem in almost every culture. And they're so important. Their glow is unmistakable. They are, of yeah. course, associated with the feminine. But that yeah. hasn't always been the case. Do you remember posting that beautiful Keshi pearl, Akoya Keshi pearl necklace? So I believe that mm -hmm. we haven't spoken about Akoya pearl. So let's uh, highlight that variety of pearl now. This is that necklace here. And so this is a multi-strand necklace of Keshi pearls. Wonderful. And this yes. is on a vintage clasp from Pacific Pearls, probably yeah. circa 1970 or something. And Wonderful. yeah, I really appreciate this necklace. It's very pretty on and you can wear it with the clasp in the back or the clasp on the side, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Akoya Pearls also come in a variety of colors. So they come in kind of a a muddy gray green they go all the way through bright blue and then mm -hmm. they go into a cream a bright white although 90 percent of white pearls are bleached to be white that's not a particularly okay. natural color from pearl thing to keep in mind and mm -hmm. then from there they go into sometimes a very deep golden although that's rare okay. mostly you stop at kind of a butter golden um akoya Oysters are quite small in comparison mm -hmm. to South Sea pearl oysters, which are quite large. Mm -hmm. And mostly they're grown in Japan and Vietnam at this point. They're, I think, also mm -hmm. using a variety of the Akoya. And mm -hmm. they're the mainstay. That's really how right. pearls created a resurgence and also how our family got into the pearl industry. You spoke about maintenance, so uh, please highlight about the maintenance tips and the points which a pearl wearer must keep in mind. Pearls do not like chemicals. They right. do not want your perfume or your makeup or anything on them, your lotion. So it's best to apply these things and let them soak into your own skin before you put your pearls on. When you're finished with your pearls, you can simply wipe them down with a damp cloth. When pearls mm -hmm. are knotted, there should be no wiggle room between the pearl knot. So when there becomes a little bit of wiggle room, then it's time to have your pearl strand re-knotted. And at this point, they will be cleaned all the way around the pearl with a soft, damp cloth. And that mm -hmm. should really be all you need. You know, don't leave them out by the pool in the sun for days oh, yeah. and days and expect them to look the same. But in general, right. pearls are pretty resilient. And that mm -hmm. depends a little bit on the pearls. When you get into natural pearls, you have to be much more careful with them. What recommendation that you would like to share with our audience where they can get more insight about pearls? Definitely. This book here mm -hmm. is by Elizabeth Strack. Mm -hmm. And she is known as the go-to about pearls. I don't know mm -hmm. anyone in the world that knows as much wow. about pearls as she does. She is Amazing. a brilliant genius and she has researched this book. As you can see, it is not small. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you can buy this um, on Amazon. It's, it's a bit of an investment, but you will not regret it. You will learn Absolutely. the history of pearls, all the different varieties, the species, what to look for. Right. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. There is also a course with the CPAA and it's called Pearls as One. And you can okay. take this course online. We actually mm -hmm. added a lot of photos and helped edit some chapters in this course. Nice. It's about a day long course and it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's very up to date. And if you're interested, you can reach out to me and I'll give you a coupon code to make it free of charge. Oh. And oh, when you're finished, you will get a certificate that says Pearl Specialist. It's really Wonderful. brilliant. It's very pretty. Somebody's asking, please repeat about the book. Maybe they want to know the name of the book. It's called Pearls. And it's by Elizabeth Strack, S-T-R-A-C-K. There was a question asked about how long does it take for you to make maybe a pearl necklace or a bracelet? If we have the pearls already laid out, a bracelet takes 15 minutes and a necklace is maybe 20 or 30. It depends mm -hmm. how small the pearls are because that was the amount of knots that it needs. So if they're Absolutely. one, two millimeters, then that will yes. exponentially increase the time. If we are putting something special together, it depends the request. If I have it in stock, it's an hour. And if I don't, it could be several months. You never know. Mm -hmm. Pearls are That's natural material. So yes. the ocean, the rivers, the lakes give us the pearls. We yes. cannot go and mine and dig deeper and deeper and deeper and try to find the perfect one. 
And before we call it a wrap, I would love to admire your Japan Kasumi pearls. I really hope that you'll come to see them on the website, where I think the color yes, is will. much better. Right yes. here, I think they read very orange and green and yellow, which they are the opposite of. So these out of different colors. They're famous for having these flashes of golden, which I'm not sure yes. if you're getting. We can see them this here. Is an interesting example because this is both round, smooth Japan Kasumi pearls. Yes. And then also we have the characteristic rippled surface pearls. I love the whole gradation yeah. that uh, this necklace has. And these are really fun. These are something that we do here. We call them bubble necklaces. And okay. what we do is we mix the sizes. So instead of a necklace being perfectly graduated with the largest in the center, we mix the sizes. And so we put them all around. And it makes a fun, just slightly different twist on a classic necklace. Yes. Do you have any words of advice for our audience? Or there's something that you would want to show us or talk to us about? If you're interested in buying pearls, please educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Like anything else that's worth any sort of money, there are mm -hmm. so many people that are either miseducated and passing on wrong information or are simply lying straight through their teeth. And it mm -hmm. is a shame. There mm -hmm. are so many people on the internet selling Kasumi pearls. I can't tell you how many times I get an email that says, why are yours 5,000? I saw one for 300. Educate yourself. That's the only advice I can give. We are happy to talk you through it. We're happy to give you resources and tools, a coupon code to spend a day and really learn. There's so much to know, and it's such a brilliant and beautiful, peaceful industry that I invite people to first educate yourself. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting that's, question that's my rant. asked. Do you find a pearl specialist to appraise pearls? That's a good one. Um, I found that a lot of appraisers don't know anything about pearls. In fact, a lot of jewelry stores don't know anything about pearls. Um, if... It depends your country, of course. If you are interested, you can reach out to us and we'll try to match you with someone. There is a great appraisers network that sometimes visit us in Tucson and they can probably work remotely to a certain degree, although I'm sure often they have right. to have it in hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, people have been asking uh, questions about the website and more about the courses. So probably we can ask them to reach out to you either on your Instagram or on your website. And that's how you can share more information about the courses and about the wonderful Pearl insights that you have with them. Certainly. There's right. a website and it's called pearl dash guide.com pearl dash guide. Okay. guide and this is a forum on pearls that's worldwide there are more people talking about pearls on this website than there ever have been in the history of wow. humans and it's a phenomenal resource and you can go there you can say these are my pearls okay. what are they and people will immediately chime in and tell you so i think that might be the best resource for pearls on the internet that maybe one could find. Do not okay. try to sell pearls there. That's impolite. So that's one resource. And the other resource is Kojima Pearls, where they can contact you and you know, you're there to guide them about the, the, all the pearl questions and queries which the audience may have. Thank you. All right. So thank you so much, Sarah, for all your time. It was you. lovely learning all about pearls and the different kinds of variety of pearls with Kojima Pearls. Have a wonderful day, thank Sarah. Thank you, Rina. You too. Sleep well. Appreciate yes, you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much.